Hopefully that sounds like fun to you. I don't even know what I'm saying today. Hi, my spoonies. Welcome back to my channel. This is like take 200 because I cannot talk at all. I don't know that there's gonna be any usable footage in any of this. Hello, my spoonies. Welcome back to my channel. Today, I'm gonna to be doing another in my series that I call Easy Eyes. These are basic tutorials for simple eyeshadow looks that you can do. They're buildable. So the look that we're going to do today has three different options. So we'll do like the simplest and then I'll amp it out and then I'll amp it out again. If you've not seen my previous video on this, I will link it up, up above, up above, who knows? Not a mobile device or a laptop or whatever, it's probably popping up someplace in any event. If this is your first time to my channel, I would appreciate it if you would take a minute, hit the subscribe button and ring the notification bell. I am having a contest for my first 100 subscribers. All you have to do is be subscribed to my channel and leave a comment in the comment box down below once you've done so. When we hit 100, I'm gonna do a random drawing and give away a bunch of Spoonie certified makeup and skincare items. So, subscribe, ring the bell. And we're going to talk a little bit about color theory today. As some of you who have been watching my channel for a while know, I am a color theorist in my real life. So this really impacts a lot of the choices that I make when it comes to like what colors I use when I put makeup on. So we're going to talk about that today as well. I'm trying to incorporate more of that into my videos because... I have conversations with people and it's easy for me to forget because I have spent the majority of my life thinking about and talking about color, not just because I'm a color theorist, but also because I'm synesthetic. So I have the thing where colors have sounds and sounds have colors. I actually have like multiple forms of synesthesia, but that one is one of the more prominent. So the majority of my life has really been focused around color and I forget that everyone else is not like that. And then I have conversations with people about things like, well, you know, there are brown black dyes and purple black dyes, and so one is warm and one is cool, and that's why your lipstick looks weird with that black dress. Right. And it clicks in my head that most people don't think about these things or even know about these things. So I'm trying to be better about incorporating this into my channel in a way that's accessible. Here's hoping it works. All right, for today's video, I've already done my um, sunscreen, foundation, concealer. I've put some um, primer on my eyelids as well. I'm using the primer that I talked about in my previous video. I will link that up above. All right, so today I'm gonna be using, it's the Just My Luck palette. I'm actually gonna be using a couple of different things. Now you, uh, clear, you do not have to use any of the things that I'm using. You don't even have to use the color scheme that I'm using if you don't like it. It's fine. That's where the color theory comes in. Today, I'm gonna to start off with this color Mary Jane. For this particular look, we wanna start off with a metallic. Number one, because the first look is really, we're only using one color of eyeshadow and then some liner. So we want the most impact. We want the most like shimmery, bright impact. And one of the things that I discovered when I was doing my makeup after I got sick is that Anything that shines, anything that sparkles, right, is a great detractor from the awful, sick, sallow bags under the eyes, right? It pulls focus. So the shinier, the better, right? I mean, sick people pretty much, if they don't want to be seen as sick, should be decked out in A, glitter, or B, really unusual lipstick colors, as my personal opinion. Trust me. Nobody notices. I wore teal lipstick the other day with no foundation and no concealer and I looked like I'd been run over by a Mack truck before I put the lipstick on and I left the house and nobody said boo to me about looking sick. Everybody was like, right? Trust me, trust the color theorist. This is what I do. So we wanna start with a shimmer. For this look to work, you really need a lighter, shimmer color to start off with. So I will cut a picture in of Mary Jane. I'm gonna take it onto this like very fluffy brush. I love 
I love this Just My Look palette, but the, the there is like a tiny bit of fallout, I find, with some of the shimmers in this palette. So just, if you are using this palette, we, like tap your brush off and watch that and um, watch under here too, because sometimes you get the fallout there. All right, so I'm just gonna take this color and I'm just gonna go all over the eye. And I'm actually gonna take it up above my crease. So one of the things that I have found is that shimmer colors can be a little bit fussy when you're taking them down for even coverage. Like I took the color all the way down into the corner of my eye, which is what you want to do for this look. You might need to switch brushes. You might need to switch to like a smaller flat brush for this if it's not going on, like if it's going on patchy. Um, I think it's just something about the formulation of most shimmers. Okay. Now, I am going to take a smaller, dense brush. You can wet your brush for this, use some kind of fixative if you want. I'm not going to. I'm just going to take this same color under the eyes, and I'm going to connect it up. Okay, I should note at this point that when I put primer on my eyelids, I also put some just right under my um, under eye area, knowing that I was gonna take the color down. Now, let's talk about eyeliners. Because this is it for the first look for shadow. This is all we're doing with shadow. Next part's eyeliner. You have a couple of choices for eyeliner for this look. And I'm gonna talk about the color theory reasons behind this. So the first choice is going to be purple. Here's why I chose purple. And I know this like, this is a NYX retractable liner in purple and it's, I can't get the plastic off of this. This what happens when you lose like your motor function in your hands and then getting things open is difficult. Anyway, purple is my first choice, right? Or one of my choices that I could have. Here's the color theory reasoning behind why I would choose purple. This color is a green gold. It has a lot of yellow in it. Yellow and purple are contrasting colors. So it's gonna pop a lot. If you know going into this, you have like no spoons, lining your eyes is gonna be like, gonna take it all out of you. You wanna probably go for the highest contrast possible. If you're in kind of one of those, let me see how this goes, I might amp it out moods then we might want to go with choice B. So your other option is to use something that's called analogous color theory, which is what I'm going to be doing today. Analogous color theory means that the colors are all very similar or very close to each other on the color wheel. So for example, green, blue, green, and blue. Knowing where I want this look to go and knowing that clearly I'm going to be doing all of the steps, I'm not gonna go for the high contrast color. I'm going to go for the analogous color I will be using this, it's, a, it's neon, but I don't really feel like it's neon neon. Blue Lighter is by LA Girls. Actually a very good liner, not super expensive. You can get it at Ulta. You can get it at some CVSs, I think as well. So the idea behind analogous color theory is that things that are close to each other are going to look good together. Now, like most color theory rules, they're not absolute. In color theory, there is no such thing as an absolute rule. Well, there's one, but we're, we're not gonna talk about that today. Really, when it comes down to it, there are no absolute rules. If you think about it, like colors are like, it's like families, right? And green and blue, green and blue, like they might all be kind of like related, they might be cousins. But if you think about it, like you lined up with your cousins, like are y'all gonna look good together? Y'all gonna get along? Maybe, maybe not, right? Maybe you have a close family. Maybe you guys all love each other and you're wonderful together and your pictures look fabulous. And maybe it's like my family where my mother and her whole family is like blonde and blue and green eyed. And then there's me with the heavy, I mean, clearly like I was born with all of the Italian and Jewish genes because hello, right? So family photos are literally like, 
Blonde, 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 blonde. Bianca. Well, I mean, there's nothing analogous about that. I am going to take this color and I'm going to put it just under my eye. Really pops the eyes out. Next, I'm going to take a brown liner. I avoid using black for this particular look because black is very harsh. It is kind of a universal liner color, but in my opinion, brown is too. Depending upon your coloring, you might want to go lighter versus darker. I have very dark hair, very dark eyelashes, so I tend towards a much darker um, brown when it comes to my eyeliner. I'm going to line all the way up into like kind of my, my tear duct to really emphasize the shape of my eyes. There we go. Pops the eyes out. I'm gonna pop a little highlighter above my, um, right on my brow bone. This is the Wet n Wild Crystal. Like it's just a white, right? Just a white, not even white, it's just like no tone highlighter, right? Which is a good choice for this look because we already have like a lot of color going on here. We don't really want to add to it. Um, a gold highlighter also would have worked, but it really would have like kind of brought that yellow color up more, and I didn't want that. I really want the golden green color where it's at. I didn't want to continue it up into my eyebrow and if you wanted you could take this into your inner eye corner I am in fact not going to I'm just gonna do this minus mascara of course so this is the first look very quick right I know it there was a lot of me like blah blah color theory blah blah right but honestly it's like swipe color swipe color Line, line, highlight, and then mascara. You're done, you're out the door. Very simple. All right, so for look number two, very simple. All you need is a liquid lip. And you're gonna wanna use a matte liquid lip. I am going to be using this liquid lip today by Sugar Pill. It's from their Little Twin Stars collection. And this color is called Kiki. I picked this one, number one, because it's matte, and number two, because it fits with my analogous color scheme. There are a lot of really good options for liquid lips. I'm a huge fan of Sugar Pills liquid lips. If you've not seen my video on Dark Sided, I will link it up above. They're an amazing product. There are also some other options. Wet n Wild makes a very good liquid lip if you're looking for a like, drugstore. But you want to stick to matte for this, um, just because we've already got shimmer on the lids and then because I know where we're, where we're going with this okay so this is one of those things if you're ever in the drugstore or Ulta or whatever and you're looking at something and you're thinking when would I ever wear that color liquid lip I mean I don't ever think that but I know some people do um, this is a good time for it right so I'm gonna take some of this liquid lip and I try to be very careful when I do this to make sure that I actually latch the lid back on because liquid lips can dry out very quickly. And I'm using, it's a concealer brush. It's a very stiff, small, tiny brush. And I'm just going to put this all over my lid, um, almost, like a, almost like a cut crease, right? So one of the things that I would recommend doing is work slow and work your way up, right? And kind of open, close, right? Check your eye as you're doing this, right? So that you don't get too far up, right? And like looking straight on, I can see I need to go up just a tiny bit higher.
Okay, so I have to revise what I said. I forgot that Kiki has just a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of gold in it. When I was putting it on, I realized I could see just a little bit of gold flecks. It's not, I don't think it's like, it's probably not even showing up on camera, honestly. Um, if you use something that's got some shimmer in it, it's not gonna be the end of the world, right? You're just gonna have a lot of sparkle, which like I said before, lots of sparkles good. So here we are. That's it for look number two. You just take a liquid lip, throw it onto the lid, leaving the shimmer up above. Boom, very bold eye. So again, minus mascara. This is it. Very easy, right? There is nothing, like, I love doing like a quote unquote cut crease with liquid lip because it is fast, right? And you are done and it looks phenomenal. Okay, we're gonna be ready for look three in just a minute. For the last look, this is incredibly simple. I'm gonna be using this product, it's by e.l.f. It's from their Jelly Pop collection. I will cut a photograph of what this actually looks like in. I'm, I'm hesitant to like tip the jar because one thing I will say about this product is that it does spill out of the container if you're not careful. In fact, I would recommend, I'm not gonna actually bang it on the table because that would be loud and annoying, but I would recommend really slapping it down a couple times before you open it especially when you first get it because I did not know that and I popped the seal off and I opened it and like it went everywhere. What this is is an eye gloss. Now the reason why I recommend using a liquid lip for this particular part right and not doing an actual like cut crease with concealer and then putting more shadow on top of it is because I knew this was going to be the last step. Here's the thing about eye glosses they are going to move on the face. This is going to move regardless of what we put underneath it. That's that's the honest truth. But if you put shadow underneath it, the gloss is going to break that shadow down very, very quickly. And you're going to kind of get this patchy, like it'll look good. It'll look good for like an hour, hour and a half. And then it's going to right dissolve. Liquid lip should not give you this trouble. Now, if you've not tested this before, like if it's a brand new liquid lip and you're not certain, then patch test it, right? Put a little swipe of like liquid lip and then put a little swipe of the eye gloss on top. This is also true if you're going to line your eyes with an eyeliner and you wanna put an eye gloss on top of it because sometimes the products don't play well together and they're gonna, the eye gloss over time is gonna actually like melt the eyeliner and force the eyeliner to kind of like move around on your eye. So here is the truth. The eye gloss, is it gonna move up my face? Yes, it's going to move up my face. That is an inevitability. But it's not gonna be so bad because I'm gonna to try to keep it very low so that when it moves up, it's not gonna go up very far. And it's still, it's a beautiful look. Like I feel like the pros far outweigh the cons, now, you can use an actual lip gloss for this, but you will not get as good of results. It's e.l.f. gloss, which is actually designed to go on the face as well as the, like you can use it as a highlighter, or you can use it as an eye product. It's been specifically designed for use on the like eyes and face in a way that is very different than the lip gloss is, right? You will get a similar look, but the wear time will not be as good. That's just my experience. I tested them both out when I bought this. I came home right away and I did like a thing where I put, you know, two swipes of liquid lip and then I did one with the e.l.f. face gloss on top and one with a regular lip gloss on top. And an hour and a half later, the one with the regular lip gloss on top just looked like liquid lip on my arm. I could still see the shimmer from the e.l.f. face gloss. This was like six bucks at Ulta, right? And I think you can also get it at Target. And honestly, like there is so much freaking product in here. I mean, I tapped it off. I don't know if you can see, you probably can't see it. It's a lot. So all you really need to do is pick up, and I mean, like I've got too much on my hand. I'm gonna like, 
this is enough for both my eyes, right? One little tap into this. I'm gonna be using, and it'll probably dry out before I can finish it, honestly. Okay, I'm just gonna take this. You wanna use your finger, do not use a brush, and you wanna use a tapping motion. Don't drag. Trust me. You drag, you're gonna wind up moving anything that's underneath it. There we go. Look at how much of that's still left on my finger. Look at this. I have enough, I could do like, I could highlight my whole face and probably somebody else's eyes with just this minuscule amount that I took from the cat. Like, honestly, this is a crazy value. Now, I do have a thing about stuff that's sticky. I don't, like, I'm clearly, I'm like wiping my hands off like a mad woman here as I'm talking. When eyeglasses first started to be a thing, this was a while ago, I want to say it was like Pat McGrath? I'm not positive. In any event, doesn't matter. When they first started to be a thing, I was like, oh, sticky. No, right? Because I sometimes have tactile things about stuff that's sticky. And then um, Toddy Westbrook did a thing on her channel using an eyegloss and she linked another makeup artist who uses eyegloss a lot in her looks. And I was like looking on this woman's Insta and suddenly it was like the light bulb went off in my head because Previously, I would use a very sheer, like, super shock shadow, which is still an option, right? A lot of times to get the impact that I would want using a super shock shadow, I would wind up obscuring the liquid lip that was underneath it, and I would kind of destroy the look. So when I was watching Toddy demo this and looking at the other makeup artist's Insta, it was like, bang, oh, right? Like, I, I was like, I know how I'm going to use that brush. So really, I mean, I know I'm like blinking like a crazy person, but I don't feel it. First 40 seconds, yes. When I would blink, it was like, eh. now we're good. All right, so this is look number three. Alrighty, I just threw on some blush and some mascara, a little bit of lipstick, very neutral, right, on the rest of the face. Piece of cake. I hope you guys found this helpful and I hope you are happy, healthy, and well rested and remembering that self-care is the most important form of care and I will see all of you in the next video. Bye.